Welcome, neighbors, to Hometown Earth, the podcast that brings a down-to-earth approach to all of your sustainability questions. I'm your host, Lena Sanford, here on the Believe Podcast Network, the number one podcast network for professionals. Here, we believe that everyone can change the world. Do you believe? I'm a Midwest gal with big dreams to discover what it takes to reduce my impact on this beautiful place we call Hometown Earth. Join me every Tuesday as we navigate what actions we can take, big or small, to make a positive impact in your life and the lives of your neighbors on Hometown Earth. Hello, I hope you're all feeling good today. Thank you for joining me. I want to take a second to welcome people from all walks of life to this space. I want this to be a place where you can come every week to feel inspired and connected without judgment. So take a deep breath and let's get started. On this week's show, I'm going to help you to unleash your inner hero and take three easy steps towards living a more sustainable life today. By the end of this episode, I want you to feel amped up and empowered to start taking action. I don't know about you, but you can tell I'm excited, y'all. We all love a good blast from the past, digging up those memories that we forgot about. And I know I have a couple. You know, we've all had someone in our lives, our grandma, parents, or teacher, tell us when we were a kid, don't forget to turn the lights off when you leave a room, or don't leave the water running while you brush your teeth. Or how about seeing the word recycle printed in big letters on colorful posters hung in the school lunchroom next to the dozens of celebrity drink milk posters on the wall. I feel like these phrases were kind of thrown at us at an early age and so much so that it actually kind of became background noise. There was little to no reasoning given why those posters were hung or why we heard those phrases. And even if we did, it's hard for a kid to realize the full effect those tips could make on the world. As I grow older, I realize the importance of those little reminders. We have the same problems we've always had. How to get more food, water, and energy to supply our needs without making a huge impact on the earth. But for a lot of us, those three things are basic necessities that we use in our everyday life. And sometimes we take them for granted. So let's break down what sustainability is and why it even matters. If you're here, you probably know the answer to this question, but okay, just humor me. Sustainability is a word that is thrown out a lot, but in the way we will be talking about it on this show, it is about making sure we protect our environment while still being able to drive innovation and without having to make huge compromises to our way of life. Like, I'm not expecting you to drop everything you have and go live on a farm, growing all of your food and only using, you know, like rainwater and solar to power your life, even though, to be honest, that is like my dream life. It's about making sure that we find a way for humans to coexist in the ecosystem we live in, the air we breathe, the plants and animals around us and where we are able to maintain that relationship for the rest of existence without mass devastation. You know, we affect the earth by our actions. And guess what? The earth's health in turn affects us. It's a circle here, folks. When we think about sustainability, we have to remember that it isn't just about us saving the planet. It's about us saving ourselves. Like, let's get a little selfish here. In order to have healthy communities, we need clean air and water and natural resources. And at the rate we are going, the earth has a timeline for climate change that is approaching sooner than you'd think. Like literally, there's a countdown that went up in Times Square that started counting down the time we have left to take action before there is irreversible climate change. Not to be a Debbie Downer, sorry to all the Debbies out there, but there's only one of this world, no planet B, and we have to make sure we take care of it so we can take care of ourselves. We all want a legacy, whether that's recognition, family, or passing on our knowledge, whatever that may be for you. We want to be able to have something that lasts longer than we do. 
And for that to happen, we have to keep the earth protected. We all need to think of the space we occupy on this earth as our hometown and literally treat everyone like they're your neighbor. We forget about our global neighbors because we don't see them. But earth is home to all of us and all life is connected and dependent on one another. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There is large systematic change that needs to happen. There are so many factors at play from big companies and our government that I promise we will dig into. But just know that there are some people in this world, in your neighborhood, that don't have the choice to live more sustainably or the choice to live low-waste lifestyles because it is something that they don't have access or privilege to. But you can help just by living a more sustainable lifestyle if you are able. I mean, isn't it kind of wonderful that we have the power to affect lives across the globe just by our actions? Like, I am telling y'all, I am so empowered to know that you are listening right now and that you're open to doing your part. So let's take a look at maybe what has been holding you back so far from living a more sustainable lifestyle and unleash that inner hero that I know you have inside. Some things you might be saying to yourself right now is that it's a lack of knowledge, or maybe you feel an unwillingness to change what you're used to, or maybe it's fear or judgment. Maybe you feel like you don't have time or feel like it's too expensive, or maybe you think that one person can't actually make a difference. I'll tell you a little story. You know, I've had those same thoughts before. I remember growing up and watching Jane Goodall on TV and just thinking how I wanted to be the one who helped the planet and made a difference like she did. You know, fast forward to a year ago and I was with my dad in the car and we were talking about climate change. And I said, how can people not believe in climate change when we can see the effects right in front of our faces all across the world? And I remember he asked me, well, what are you doing to change the world? And the car went silent for a minute. Like, I did not have an answer. I was all talk and no action. I remember saying something like, millennials are doing things to make a change. Like, hoping that someone else would be willing to take up the slack for me. And that would be enough. And I'll tell you, I'm an independent person. So it was a crappy feeling to think somebody else was having to do the work that I wasn't willing to do. So I did what everybody does when they start at the beginning of a journey. I started looking into what I could do and learning. Little by little, I started listening, reading, and watching whatever I could to soak up information about how to live with a smaller footprint on this earth. Within two weeks, I had changed my complete mindset about what I was consuming and made the switch to plant-based living cold turkey. Well, in this case, we'll say cold tofu. But seriously, it was one of those things that once you know, it's hard to unknow. But I still had to fight those same limiting thoughts I had before. They didn't just go away. I realized that you don't have to have it all figured out, that anything is a learning process. And it's taken us this long to get where we are. So don't feel the pressure to know everything all at once. Let's crush those limiting beliefs that are holding us back from making real change. You know, I don't want to get too negative, but I feel like it's necessary to say it like it is. Like I'm laying it all out there. And let's just be honest with ourselves because honestly, what has that limited thinking cost us so far? It's cost us lives in wildfires and extreme weather changes, cancerous pollutants of our air, land, and water, causing us to lose people that we love, unimaginable living conditions for some of our fellow humans, animal extinction and shortage in natural resources, and that's just naming a few of the big ones. It's going to continue to cost us if we don't try to make a change. So let's bash those limiting beliefs right now. Lack of knowledge. All right, I've got you right here at Hometown Earth. We're going to break down this stuff together. If it's unwillingness to change, well, you wouldn't be here if you weren't already interested in change. 
You've already dipped your toes into this glorious water by listening. So why not step fully in and see where it takes you? I promise, like the water is nice here. Is it lack of time or money? I'm going to share a secret. Learning takes time. But thankfully, there are so many resources out there that can help speed up the process of what you're trying to learn. And a lot of them, guess what, are free. We are in the digital age where we can quickly consume so much information. And I'm going to break it down for you with all of the tips, tricks, and hacks so you feel empowered to do what fits your life. Is it that you think that one person can't make a difference? I think you know this one isn't true. For instance, the average person makes 4.5 pounds of trash a day. Americans throw away about 307 plastic bags a year. And one passenger vehicle, one, makes about 4.6 metric tons of carbon dioxide per year. And those are just a few examples. So by the numbers alone, reducing your individual waste will help to reduce the overall plastics and pollutants that end up in our landfills, water sources, and air. But here's the good part. I know y'all are waiting for it. (laughs) There is no better day to start than right now. We've busted those limiting beliefs, and I'm here to walk you through this to help you make those changes and learn that it doesn't have to be time-consuming or expensive and that you can make a difference. Let me repeat that. You can make a difference. I'm here to tell you that you can start living sustainably today in three easy steps. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm imagining you're nodding your head right now. So (laughs) let's get started. I want to do a fun exercise. Let's mentally walk through your morning routine and just observe some things around you and the habits that you have. I do this exercise to examine my whole day, but we can start small with just your morning routine. All right, you with me? Let's imagine you start taking a shower and getting ready for the day. Think through that morning routine and everything you use from the light switch you flip to the Q-tip that you ditch in the trash, and just try to take some inventory. I'll post some questions to help you think through this. Do you throw away the old bottles of shampoo you've got lying around in the shower? How many products are you using in plastic containers or containers that can't be recycled? Let's be honest with Grandma here. Did you leave the water running while you brushed your teeth? How long was that hot shower? You can think about if you use cotton rounds or tissue paper. Do you know if you have a low flow or aerated shower head? Is your razor metal or plastic? All right, now let's get dressed for the day. Take a look at your closet. Is it filled with fast fashion? Do you know who made the clothes you're going to put on or the conditions that they worked in? There's no right or wrong answer here. We are just observing. Okay. So you head downstairs to make yourself breakfast. What do you make and what's in it? What's the packaging like? Maybe you're throwing away the shell of the avocado you used to make the most delicious avocado toast with everything seasoning. Hopefully you're sharing. (laughs) Or maybe you indulged in some bacon and eggs. Do you know where it was sourced from? Is it organic? How are you storing your leftovers? Is it with aluminum foil? Do you have a compost bin under your cabinet? Or what about the drawer that I know that we've all had that is stuffed with plastic bags? All right, all right. Let's pretend you've had time to clean up the kitchen. And if you did, you are a superhero already because in real life, I've never had time to clean in the morning. So what are you using to wash the dishes? What about cleaning the countertops? Do you know how many chemicals are in those products or what you're taking into your body? All right, so guess what? You've already made it through step one, evaluating your lifestyle and consumption. How easy was that? They say the hardest part of achieving something is getting started, and you've already taken that first step without even knowing it. Congrats. I use this exercise every quarter to help me walk through my day 
and realize my usage and where I could improve. Whether you're just starting out on your sustainable journey or you've been on it for a while, it's always good to evaluate your usage throughout your daily life and take inventory. Take one day to pay conscious attention to what you're throwing away, how much energy you use, and how much water you use. Maybe you take two days, one for paying attention to what's going in your trash and one for examining what's actually in the products and the food that you are consuming. You don't have to have all of the answers and likely you're going to find way more questions. That's okay. This isn't an exercise in feeling guilty about your usage or even being perfect because that is not an attainable goal. It's just to help put things in perspective and help you to come up with realistic goals, which leads to step two. Step two is about determining your goals and priorities. This is when you sit down and think, what do I really need? What's important to me? I would suggest starting small so you don't get overwhelmed. Some goals could be getting your trash down to one bag a week or to stop buying single-use plastics for a month, or making one room more sustainable at a time. Let's say starting in your kitchen and making a list of five changes you can make to be more sustainable this month. Or maybe you start even smaller, and you decide you'll switch out one household item for a more sustainable option every other week or month. And I'll have some tips for that in a minute. Write down these key actions you're going to take and put them somewhere you will see them. These goals should also incorporate what you already know how to do and maybe don't practice as often as you should, like conserving energy by waiting to turn the shower on until you're ready or shutting off the lights in the room you aren't using. And if you're thinking, whoa, 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 Lena, this sounds overwhelming. Don't worry. I've made a digital worksheet that you can use to help outline your goals, your priorities, and your actions for that month that you can download for free on lenasanford.com forward slash hometown earth. You can check out hometown earth on Instagram for statistics on the top household offenders for harmful products and waste that may help you decide what you want to try first. All right, we're already on to step three. Step three is sharing your journey with the people that you love. Like, shout it from the rooftops. Telling other people about your goals not only helps to keep you accountable and motivated, but it helps you to learn and grow. When you share with others, they may have tips or tricks that you didn't know about, and it helps you to grow your community of like-minded individuals. Follow social accounts that support the change that you are trying to make. Because, you know, if you're staring at things all day while you're scrolling on Instagram or Facebook, if you're staring at those things and they don't make you feel good or they don't help you improve your life, it's going to be hard to make a change. Sharing my journey was a huge needle mover for me. It helped my friends and family be able to respect my goals and to make sure that they didn't pressure me to do things that I was trying to change. Keeping a journal is also a great idea to document your process and learning. And you know, sometimes your social media is a journal if you don't want to sit down and actually write. But have you ever had that moment you didn't think was significant, but then you looked back and thought, wow, how far I've come. That's what I want for you. I mean, hello, this podcast is about sharing and learning together. Feel free to send me your completed worksheets or tag me in them on Instagram at Hometown Earth and let's do a virtual happy dance together because you are already making a change. I want to leave you with something every week that can help to carry you until we meet again. And I'm going to call it something to grow on. This week is a simple quote from Anna Monar that reads, All human beings are my neighbors. We share the same planet. I want you to go through the rest of the week and every person you pass, try to think of them as your neighbor instead of a stranger and see how your mind shifts or better yet, how you grow. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week.
I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hometown Earth as much as I did. Let us know by rating and subscribing so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every week on Tuesday. Head to the show notes linked in the episode description for more details and let us know in the comments what you want to hear next. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Believe.com and at Believe Podcasts. And you can find more about the podcast on Instagram, at Hometown Earth, or connect with me, at Lena Sanford. We all know change needs to happen, so let's get started right here at Hometown Earth.